Good morning. For countries that have advanced militaries and industries that build equipment and weapons for their military, they will have much better technology for that equipment than what is available commercially. National defense will have priority over industry and commerce. Earlier we showed how the Chinese civilian drones are superior to our, the United States, drones that are military grade. That the drones built by China for civilian and commercial applications are preferred by combatants in the Ukraine and in Israel over the drones that we build for combat, for war fighting. And the obvious question is, how much better are the drones being developed and used by the Chinese military, given how good their civilian drones are? This is the Huawei Mate 60 phone, stripped apart and analyzed by Tech Insights and published by Bloomberg. It was shocking to industry experts because it had a lot of stuff in there that is China built. The main chip, top left, is the Kirin 9000S, made by SMIC China. The RAM chip comes from SK Hynix of South Korea, and these chips were probably stockpiled before the sanctions went on. The lithium ion battery, China owns those supply chains all the way, so no surprise, a Sunwoda is also Apple's supplier. Camera, top right, from Ofilm, also made in China, but the image sensors come from Sony. Uh, the display, made in China by BOE, which also makes for Foxconn, who puts them in iPhones. Operating system, their OS is Harmony, which is now made in China. Huawei used to be open source and Android, but now Huawei is moving away from Android because Google is a US company. This phone was not supposed to exist again at all and if Huawei could build it it wasn't supposed to be before 2030. The entire objective of the semiconductor sanctions put on by the Trump administration and tightened again by the Biden administration were to keep the Chinese at least eight years behind the most advanced technology. That's a quote here, the most advanced technology. And when they stripped apart the Mate 60, just this tech right here is roughly five years behind. And the sanctions were because of this here. The most advanced semiconductors that power Huawei's phones could also have military applications, such as drones or supercomputers. I would say they've got this backwards. If China is mass producing phones, Huawei sold 30 million of these phones in just six months. These would not be their most advanced chips. If they're selling tens of millions of these to Chinese kids playing games on their phones, we should assume that the guys building hypersonic missiles had these chips a few years ago, and they have better ones now. Bloomberg's got a long piece on how Huawei was able to do it, and it's a great story, and we'll link to it. Huawei began closely studying the entire supply chain since 2014, before Trump, before Biden. They wanted to find out where the choke points are the parts of the supply chain where the United States or our allies can deny them the key technologies they need. Huawei was preparing for sanctions before they came, in other words. This guy here is Ren Zhangfei. He is the founder of Huawei and is still CEO. He's 79 years old and he still runs the place. And it's a failure of our education system as well as business journalism, that almost everyone in the world has heard of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, but nobody knows who he is. Ren founded Huawei in 1987, and he's still on the job. This is highly unusual by our standards, by American companies. Most founders find themselves unable to manage companies as they grow from one million to a billion to $10 billion. That was true of Bill Gates and the guys at Google who turned their companies over, couldn't manage them anymore past that size. So he's an old guy who's in charge of a fast moving company and a fast moving industry. This is also highly unusual by our standards. The company Huawei is very large, but it also innovates very quickly. Again, highly unusual by our standards. At a certain size, companies can't move. They can't adapt, especially in tech. 
looking at our own tech companies, Hewlett Packard, some microsystems, Intel you could even say, who haven't produced anything really new or innovative since the beginning of the century. And how things have played out for Huawei and for the sanctions were based on a playbook that assumed that Ren and Huawei would not be able to compete under the sanctions because no U.S. company would be able to do so. And that's true. Huawei did succeed, though. They have the determination and the size and they have the engineering talent. Lots and lots of engineers who are very good. Over 10 years ago, everything was fine at Huawei and in Washington, but Ren was uneasy. He told his engineers that Huawei needed to build its own semiconductors. It was a mortal threat at the time. He saw how vulnerable Huawei was to a shift in mood or in the market. So they were already working on the problem with semiconductors. Then, when the sanctions did come, thousands of Huawei engineers were told to get busy on everything else that came in a phone or in a laptop and assume that sanctions would eventually come for everything else, for the software, the circuit boards, display. Thousands of engineers, you're not going home until you figure out how to make the entire device with stuff we have here in China. Last year, Huawei's Mate 60 phone comes out and immediately our officials try to figure out what happened. Why didn't the sanctions work? Why were the sanctions falling short? When Biden tightened the sanctions in 2022, the seven nanometer chips were supposed to be impossible for China before 2030. But the chips were in mass production in the market in just the following year. It is always supply chains. And we think of supply chains as the raw materials, the copper, the lithium, the oil, the steel. But it's actually people. It's the engineers who put them all together. Huawei's success in spite of, or because of, the sanctions is literally the same success that almost all the companies in China have. It's true, yes, that China has control over most of the raw materials inputs. But those raw materials were always there, just sitting in the ground. So that's not the most important thing. People are. China has the world's deepest bench of top engineering talent. And their industries are still often run by 80-year-old guys who can walk into a room of 20-somethings and say, nobody's going home until they build a new processor without using any foreign parts. And nobody went home until they built the Kirin chip. This is Huawei, but the same story could be told of a million companies here who act the same way. Our point here is that Huawei is not remarkable by Chinese standards. They're remarkable by our standards. This is how things are here. To people in China, to people who understand China, even a little bit, it is not a surprise that the semiconductor sanctions have failed. It's surprising that anyone believed they might work at all. Guangxi province, next up. Enjoy the weekend. Be good.